Hi everybody, I'm Micah Bell and I welcome you to join me with this talk about deliverance. I think one of the most essential elements of the Kingdom of God is dealing with demons, spirits. In fact, the whole Christian walk is about dealing with spirits. Uh, first of all, the Spirit of God that comes to us and directs us to the, the Lord Jesus and the Heavenly Father. And then, of course, we realize that we deal with other spirits. So many Christians are being taught that once you become a believer and get filled with the Holy Spirit, as they say, that you can't have demons in you. But there's nothing further from the truth. And so the Lord called me years ago to emphasize this ministry. Not It's not the only ministry, of course. We're to preach the kingdom and to cast out demons and heal the sick and so forth. But one of the emphasis he gave me was because of the lack of this being taught and understood uh, was with deliverance, what we call casting out of demons. And that's what Jesus came doing and saying by that he was destroying the works of the devil. Now we're not going to go any further with that because there's an aspect of, of deliverance that needs to be understood. Uh, even this morning as I I woke and I was sitting drinking my coffee looking out the window I began to realize that some of the things I deal with in my body have to do with what we call wrestling and wrestling with these things and I could say so much more about that but then what really confirmed that I should talk about this was I got an email the same morning uh, and I found out just in a few minutes after I was thinking about this and praying about this, that a, a dear sister up in Indiana was asking a question about this very thing, which where some men were saying and teaching that we're not to pray against principalities and powers or those kinds of things, that they'll come back and they'll hurt us, and uh, we don't have that kind of authority. And I, I want to say this, that after all these years, I know better than this. And I know better than this, not only because of experience, but also because of what God's Word says. And so let's look at a few of those scriptures here this morning. And I'll get you to move in closer here. In Ephesians 6, it says it very plainly. It says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That, 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 that's not our walk anymore. But it's a spiritual walk. It says, but we do, and I would say wrestle against what? Principalities, powers, rulers. A host of wickedness in the heavenlies. It's a spiritual battle. And so, what's a principality? It's one of the higher echelons of the demonic kingdom. You know, there's a kingdom of Satan and the demons as well as the kingdom of God. There's two kingdoms, only two. And I've taught about this. And I hope you can see this. See? So, if we wrestle, what do we wrestle with? Well, we wrestle with these things and if we wrestle with them then certainly the Lord wants us not to be helpless as they uh, affect our lives so how can we say that any such thing as some are teaching about this I, I don't want to put anybody down I don't want to uh, you know in any way think that uh, uh, I've got a they've got a log in their eye and I've got a speck in mine so to speak but anyway Let's look up the meaning of this word wrestle. And actually what it means, as I looked it up, to contend by grappling with and striving with uh, uh, to trip or throw an opponent down or off balance. It, it means uh, uh, to, to engage in, in uh, <laughs> or as if in a violent, determined struggle. Uh, another, th another person said to take part in a fight. Uh, we, we wrestle a lot with flesh and blood, but we fight with demons. Brother Paul said, I've fought a good fight. So, so we take part in a fight, either as a sport or in earnest, that involves grappling with uh, your opponent or trying to throw them to the ground, force them down, get a hold of them, force them down, stop them. Now, we could talk about uh, the grammar here, what we call an intransitive verb, whatever it means. It's a question uh, like where, when, how, or how long. Uh, this is the verb here, to wrestle. When, how, <laughs> how long? That's a good question. 
And this is a secular definition. But there's another a transitive verb, to engage in, to wrestle with. Wrestle like with an alligator, someone said. To move, maneuver, or force with difficulty. This is, this is, our, this is our walk as believers. And a lot, a lot of folks don't want to hear this. Uh, a lot of folks teach that, no, 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 no. It's all peace and it's all goodness, it's all blessing. But when we even look at the Greek word here and some of the definitions there, to engage in an intense struggle uh, involving physical or non-physical force against strong opposition, to struggle, to fight. Now, if you really are walking with the Lord, then it says it's not against human beings that we fight, but against spiritual forces. So if you're in the walk of commitment to the Lord, total commitment, and and seeking the Lord, seeking the kingdom, you're in a fight. You're at war. It's all through the Bible. It started in the wilderness with the children of Israel and all through the, the, the life of David. And even Paul talked about uh, how he wrestled with satanic forces and so forth. So as someone says, for a Christian, uh, this warfare has a, an end time dimension, es- eschatological uh, his, his wrestling is part of the great final battle, which has already begun. And now it's intensifying, as we all know, with this plague that's going on, this vaccine thing and so forth. It, the intensity is increasing. What? This wrestling, this fighting uh, in the physical realm, as well as the spiritual realm, so especially in the spiritual realm. When we end up with problems in the physical realm, It has its origin in the spiritual realm. The Lord wants you to see that if you don't already know that. Everything comes out of the spirit. So why is that so? Well, let's talk more about this. We're not supposed to pray against principalities and powers. That's not what Jesus taught. That's not what the, the word taught. So in Matthew 28, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All of it. All authority over principalities, over rulers, uh, darkness, everything. So then he says, go. <laughs> what do you mean go? I have the authority over all of this. Now I want you to go and make disciples of the nations. Make disciples of them. A little bit of difference here. So what's he saying? He says, I have authority, so now I'm going to impart it to you. I'm going to make you uh, an emissary, an ambassador, whatever, with his authority. And that's what we are here, see. So looking at Luke 4 now, it says, uh, Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Now listen to this. And this is what the devil said to to Jesus, the Son of God. He said, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, you will worship me, and all will be yours if you do this. Huh. Wow. Did you hear what Satan said? All authority has been given to him. So we know that on the cross. Jesus there took the authority. And that's what he said. All authority now, after I've gone to the cross and died, been resurrected, given my blood, all authority has been given to me. There was a transfer of authority. When Satan did this, it was before he was crucified. It was in the wilderness, and Jesus had been fasting in over 40 days. And so look at this. What he was saying. Now, does Satan still have authority? Yes, he does. And let me tell you this, that you can go and you can make a deal with the devil. And that's what a lot of people have done, especially rock stars and famous celebrities and people in all of these wicked, evil, secret organizations and so forth. They're working with Satan. They're working with demons. Everybody that's practicing witchcraft is working with demons. I've, I've talked to some of them. Oh, no, no, no. They say, no, 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 no. There's no good demons. There's nothing good 
that Satan or the demons can do or help you with. They'll make you think they can. They'll even make you think you're healed. And you may feel like it for, for a while, maybe for a few years. But one day it's going to cave in. It's going to be over. So you can go to that kingdom. You can get rich. You can get things and so forth. But there are serious, serious eternal consequences for such as this. Except through Jesus, okay? So in Luke 9, Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. This is the word of God. Authority over all demons. Are principalities demonic powers? Yes. Yes, all demons. And sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So there you have it. Don't let somebody tell you that you can't deal with these things. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. We are giving sometimes territorial power. But the point I'm making is this. But before I do it, let me go on to Luke 10. Jesus said to his disciples, the 70, when they returned, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, which are demonic types, and we'll not talk about that now, and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Wow. And what I began to see was in this, in the wrestling, in the event of wrestling, is that maybe these demonic powers are not necessarily in us hurting us, but they rub against us. They, they, they touch us, see? And, and so he said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Brother John in First John, uh, the book he wrote, uh, said that the evil one should, didn't touch him. Well, how do we get there? We get there with binding. We bind him. Now, now understand this. I, the authority that the Lord gives us uh, is important that we understand. And he's at times given me authority that's unbelievable. I, he gave me authority to go to the nation of France and go to the old capital and pray and bind up things and do war, what we call spiritual warfare. And it affected the whole nation, even to the point that the cathedral in Paris burned down. And I know it was because of the warfare that I and some other brethren did. I've seen it effective in this country. I've seen it effective in other countries. I've seen it effective in certain parts of the country. Even here in Texas, in East Texas, the Lord showed me plainly uh, the, the prince over that area. And I could go on and on about that. Some of you have heard me tell about that. So we do have authority over principalities and powers. And there are times that the Lord might direct us to go against them, especially in your, in your city, your town, wherever you are. He wants to show us what these principalities are. What, what they, there's different kinds. There's pride. Uh, there's witchcraft. There's all kinds that I've encountered. The Queen of Heaven over France. Uh, with the Mariolatry and all that that goes with it. Uh, knowing this, the Lord showed me and said, go pray against this principality, this power, this evil, this darkness. And I did. And the re results are still going on. And it's going to bring this nation to the, to the Lord. I believe that with all my heart. So uh, the, the warfare we've done for this nation by going to the geographical center and doing the warfare myself and three other brothers. All of this is important against principalities, against power. So one thing I can tell you, you say, well, I don't have that much authority. Let me tell you, you have authority in your personal life. You have authority over these things in your home. You have authority over these things in your over your property, over your possessions, over your finances, over your job, over God's su su support for you. Uh, Realize this and take that authority. If nothing else, uh, maybe you can't bind them across the street, but you can sure bind them from affecting you. Take authority and say, I bind you in Jesus' name. Stay out of my life. Stay out of my home. Don't touch my property. Don't in Jesus' name. I bind you from that. What did Jesus say? Upon this rock, 
where these demonic powers did what they did, I will build my ecclesia. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose shall be loosed. So we can bind evil spirits and we can loose good things, godly things. We can loose the spirit of prophecy, loose the spirit of love, loose the spirit of peace. It's a work of spirits. There are at least seven spirits, if not more, of God. And Jesus came with seven spirits in his hand. We'll not get into that. But don't believe these people that teach such, leaving us uh, helpless. I have authority over all the power of the enemy. And in these broader contexts, yes, I need to hear from the Lord. But within the scope of where I walk, where I live, I have authority over principalities, over powers, over these rulers. I bind you. Don't touch me. Don't hurt me. Nothing shall by any means hurt you, for I have authority over all your power. Dunamis or exousia, it doesn't matter. I praise you, Lord, for that. Praise the Lord for that. So uh, I just feel felt compelled to do this, and I've had a battle getting this recording to be done. <laughs> and it's not done yet. I'm still doing it right here. But the, the battles that go on, so finally we say, okay, that's it. I bind you. Stop this. They will come against everything in your life if you let them. But re remember this, they rub against us. Think about what it means to wrestle with somebody. To, to get down on the floor and they're sweaty and you're sweaty and you're holding them down or they're holding you down and it's skin to skin, face to face, body to body. That's the word here. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but we do wrestle with these things. And so think... Jesus and his blood and his power that we've, we've been given authority over these things. And uh, we can deal with these things. We can bind these things. We can actually run them off. Get away. Leave me alone. And that's what it's all about, to destroy the works of the devil. If Satan's working in your life, working in your, any part of your life, your finances, your health, or anything, you have authority. You have authority. Go to the Lord. And speak that name. I rebuke you, I bind you, and cast them out. If you've got children that are unruly and, and going on, it's, it's demons. Take authority. We have authority over all the power of the enemy, especially our children that are under our authority as parents. And so uh, it's time we stand up and begin to fight, and knowing that if we wrestle this thing, we can pin it down and put an end to it. And that's what he's saying. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. God bless you. Peace.